Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Hope you are okay on that side of the screen. And today I've got here a really interesting microphone. This is the Toner Key 9. It is a USB condenser microphone and I still haven't checked the audio quality on my sound monitors back there. I only have checked the volume levels here on my laptop so that I could do this intro. What we are going to do on this particular video is to check out the microphone. It is, in my opinion, really interesting, having in mind the price and what it offers. And I'm curious because the audio quality here on my laptop seems really nice. Now my expectation is high. So I'm going to pause this video. I'm going to listen to it and we will be back because I want to do some comparisons as well with the Blue Yeti, which is a, a reference microphone that I've got right over here. Before we do, if you are looking for a budget Windows 10 or Windows 11 Pro key at a budget price or even a office 2021 key don't forget to check the link down below for cdkeysales.com which is a platform that we have tested works fine we can activate windows or office without any issues whatsoever and that being said i'm going to pause the video and i will be right back and we are back so i just listened to the intro that i did record here with you and i was impressed with a few things one of which was the sound isolation which i was expecting because this is a cardioid microphone very similar to what we have on the blue yet in the case of the toner key 9 it's not just a microphone it's the package itself and there will be a link down below so that you guys can check out all the specifications and so on and so forth because here we will focus on the audio quality that we will get, especially in terms of voice and noise isolation. And talking about noise isolation, I was listening to the first clip that I did record. I did one adjustment, which was to increase a little bit the volume so that we can check how it is this sequence right over here. And I also want to do a test right over here with you. I've got my AC on because it's summer. I live in Portugal in the Algarve, really hot. And the AC is on, but I didn't listen to the AC while I was listening to the first clip that I did record right over here. So we are going to do another test, which I'm going to shut up for a little bit, which is a bit difficult. And I'm going to switch off the AC. You are going to listen to it. And at this moment, there is no AC. So, and when I was um, in silence, I hope that we can get an idea if we can isolate the sounds or not, because that was the idea that I did get when I did record the first clip. Right now I'm going to put on the AC because this is my natural environment. One of the advantages of using this kind of microphone right over here, including the Toner Key 9, is that instead of using a Pell microphone, which I usually use and I love, which will get right, really, really close and will isolate some sounds, not all. If you compare some videos that I did, just search the channel, you will see the advantages and disadvantages. Now, talking about advantages and disadvantages, I will not put any kind of music on this particular video so that we can listen to what we've got right over here in terms of audio quality in case you are looking for something to uh, put a better voice quality to that side of the screen. And that being said, on another note, I'm recording with the Sony ZV-E10, which is one of my favorite cameras, but in terms of sound, can you listen to it? Nothing compared with a condenser microphone and then I'm also recording just because I love this camera and I always am curious to test out but I know for a fact that the sound it's worse on the Canon than on the Sony and none of them compare with any microphone at all and this one right over here the key 9 is doing a great job at least for what I listen on my workstation on the first clip at least isolating the sound. In terms if you enjoyed the sound or not, I hope to give you enough time and comparing with another microphone so that you can listen and then make your decision if this is worth it for you or not. Talking about that, one of the things that I really find interesting is that this is a package, not only a 
microphone. So inside the package, we will find the microphone and all the accessories you can see right over there on screen. It comes with a pop filter and also a normal filter right over here. In terms of the assembly, really easy. It comes with the clamp for any desk. I did put on this desk right over here so that I could share with you. And then we just put the arm uh, and then it has a shock mount, which is great to absorb some movements that we make on our desk and vibrations especially. And I think it's doing a really nice job and everything is included. So when we talk about the pricing, it's something that we need to have in mind on any product. And this is one of them. When I do compare this without comparing the audio yet, to the Blue Yeti. The Blue Yeti is more than double of this microphone. So there will be a link down below. You can check it out and see for yourself if uh, it's interesting or not, having in consideration in a few moments the comparison with it. Now, I was talking about the movements. One of the things that I would like to share with you is that this kind of microphone is different from the lapel microphone, which I can just go anywhere. Here, if I go away from the microphone, as you can see, or as you can hear, the sound will be different. We will need to get, uh, at least in my opinion, close to this kind of microphone, at least with cardioid mode, to get close to the person that we are talking. And when we are doing voiceovers, which is one of the things that I would like to mention, the pop filter to me, I only use it when I'm doing voiceovers for a client and I really need to be uh, attention to the script that I'm reading and I'm not focusing on the distance that I am from the microphone. So this is the only reason for me to use a pop filter to deliver a great uh, audio quality without any kind of issues. For YouTube, honestly, I would use without filter because I really like the to see the design of the microphone or I would use with this filter if I do a lot of mistakes. But on YouTube, you would be okay excusing someone for a mistake or any pop that you would hear on a voiceover that you deliver to a client that it's not excusable. Nonetheless, if we count or if we have in fact the price of it and then forgetting the pop filter and the other filter, even if you don't use, but just having in mind the arm and also the shock, the shock mount, we are talking about here at a value that's including the microphone. It's really, really hard to say no, especially when hearing this and having in mind that I will only here completely when I'm editing this video and then afterwards because the first clip was probably one minute or so and I was impressed so my expectations are I but at the end of the day the decision will be on that side one of the things that I would like to share and for those of you that follow the channel you know how I use my microphones I've got a boom arm right over here with one of my microphones and I've got two other boom arms similar to these, one for the camera and one for the microphone. So this is one of the setups that I'm used to it. Just have in mind that we will need to be close to it. If I have the microphone right over here and I talk to that side, the sound will be different and the same will happen if I talk to that side or if I talk to this side. So this kind of microphone is not the ideal for a interview. If I have someone here and someone here, this is not the best case scenario. Neither is a lapel microphone, uh, just if we have two lapel microphones, yes, or if we have a microphone omnidirectional that we can capture sound from everywhere. But that will also capture sound from my AC, which in this particular case, it's doing a great job, at least in my first sample. And talking about samples, here we are with my Blue Yeti microphone on this stand right over here. And right now you are listening to the Blue Yeti. I'm the same distance more or less than the Toner Key 9 right over here. And hopefully I can send to that side of the screen enough uh, sampling so that you can hear the sounds of the Toner Key 9 and also at the same time the sounds of the Blue Yeti, which is, in my opinion, a microphone which is a reference in the market in terms of pricing and in terms of quality. If you ask me, is it good for the price? I would say yes, I did purchase it with that in mind. Is the Toner Key 9 good for the price? Yes, because it comes with a lot and for what I've heard, it does have that sound that I would not mind at all 
to send to that side of the screen. But this is something that you will need to decide. Now, the Blue Yeti, and I have to mention this, has four recording modes. I'm recording on the cardioid mode, which is the same mode that the Toner K9 has. So we are on the same level. Having in mind that if I want to do an interview, I will change modes and the Blue Yeti has that mode for interview. So have this in mind. But if you are just going to use the cardio mode for voiceovers, YouTube videos, streaming videos and things like that, then so probably the Toner K9 makes more sense in terms of pricing and in terms of the accessories that it brings. Now I'm going to go back a little bit and let's see if there's any difference between the Blue Yeti microphone right over here in terms of picking the audio and the Toner K9 picking the audio as well at the same distance more or less. So hopefully this will give you an idea of both microphones in terms of quality, Toner K9 and also the Blue Yeti which is still a great microphone. And just a, a, a last test and sorry about that, the Sony ZV-10 which is a great camera, great image quality but the sound is just not there. And Canon M50, which is a companion which have been with me for quite a few years and I love it. I'm not going to discard it, but in terms of sound, uh, so Toner K9, probably a good choice. Yeti, probably a good choice. The choice is on your side and on this side of the screen, hopefully, I could help you to make a decision on the microphone that you could get. One of the examples is that uh, on the next video, I will record a short clip just for Instagram. And I don't want to use my phone audio. I don't want to use my camera audio. I always use an external microphone, either my lapel microphone or I use any other microphone that I have here on the office. In this particular case, I'm going to record uh, with this Toner K9 because I do believe that it's enough for a clip on Instagram where I do want to deliver not only a great video experience for that one minute clip, but also a nice audio experience. So this is another example. If you are a Instagrammer or TikToker or any kind of content creator, probably this is a great add-on for your setup. That being said, hopefully this video was helpful in some way. And if it was, don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George and as always, I'll see you guys on the next one.